Where are we? Lake Josephine in the part of the uh, Glacier National Park called Many Glaciers. And we are surrounded, as you go around this lake, we're surrounded by glaciers. It's really quite amazing because there used to be a hundred glaciers in this area, and there's now maybe 25. And they expect that all of those will be gone within the next 15 years. And it's just, it's just such a pristine, beautiful day. <clears throat> this lake is the most amazing emerald color. But as I sit here with you, more 27th so of July. On the 27th of July, I, I wonder sometimes when we're sitting and having these tremendous moments, just what it is that goes through your mind and what you're most grateful for. You know, it, you come out in nature like this and you have the opportunity to feel of the peace and the serenity and the solitude that's here. And uh, there's healing that happens in nature. Uh, there's there's things that we all go through in our lives that, that require us to um, take moments to, to connect back to our roots, to connect to who we really are. And uh, nature is where we can find that constantly. We can look to the mountains, we can look to the oceans, we can look to the forests. Uh, there's so many places. The sounds that we hear in nature are calming, they're soothing. The, the sound of a thunderstorm and the rain hitting the ground, the sound of, as you can probably hear right now, the wind just came up a little bit and it's blowing through the tops of these pine trees. But those sounds that we hear and see and feel in nature, along with everything we experience, we have to take time and we have to live in the moment that we're in. And uh, it, when we do that, um, it's really difficult to explain that the connection that you <clears throat> can come to and the connection that you can feel in your own life. And it helps you to get back to uh, your true uh, nature of who you are on the inside. Uh, we all have egos, we all have uh, physical wants and needs, we all have uh, things that our mind gets lost in and worries and stresses. But those things we have to find time to balance those out and, and spend time in nature because that's there that we start to realize what really is important and it's not all of the things that bring us so-called success and and uh, money and all of those things it's it's taking time to be out and connect back to who you truly are in your soul it's interesting that you bring that up in terms of the saying you know the a thunderstorm i know there were times when i was living in a very large city and a thunderstorm would come up and i would have to walk from the train to uh to my apartment and Oftentimes, instead of celebrating the thunderstorm and feeling the rain against my face and being in that moment with the rain, my thoughts would be more collected around that I had forgotten my umbrella and that were my shoes going to get ruined and was my hair not going to be kept dry and I was so caught up in, in just thoughts that didn't take me or keep me centered. And now I think, we, I've walked with you many times in rainstorms. Mm -hmm. And the feeling that one feels when you just put your face up to the rain and feel those raindrops on your eyelids, run down your cheeks, it's just, that's really what it's meant when it's, when people talk about being in the moment. It's how you perceive it. It's what you let it be for you. Right. It, it can be a negative, you know, a, a burden for you. It can be something that's, you know, makes you uncomfortable but it can also be something that that helps you realize it you know through the eons and eons of time in nature man have lived amongst the elements uh, you know it's not been that long that we haven't been living out in nature in, uh, in shelters and you know, native americans that lived in teepees and you think of uh, in uh, south america the other natives that lived in, in their grass huts and and the African nations that still many of them have uh, that and 
the Amazon too, that they, they still live that way. We live in a, a so-called civilized world, but <clears throat> living in that so-called civilized world has kind of helped us to get lost in that. It's and, really um, creating the balance where we can have some of the luxury and security and safety of some of the civilization, but where we don't get lost to then the other part that is so much more akin to our souls. Right. Yeah. And you come to a place like this, and it's we're out here in in uh, creation in a place that it's so pristine. Uh, you know, at any moment we could see mountain goats roaming on these rocks. Or grizzly bears eating grizzly berries. Grizzly bears eating berries. Uh, there's black bear and grizzly bear all over here in Glacier National Park. And uh, it's interesting, as we were coming across on the boat today, the uh, the boat captain said, <clears throat> he asked a question, he said, what is the average amount of time that people spend here in Glacier National Park? And any guesses what the, the average amount of time is? And, uh, you know, people would say three days. Some said, you know, uh, one week. day a week or whatever. And, and he said, the average amount of time that people spend in Glacier National Park is three hours. That's and, uh, terrible. <laughs> it's I can't, after spending almost five days here, I can't imagine what you'd see in three hours yeah. that would warrant the trip to come. You wouldn't There's be so taking much, time. You'd just be driving so much through. more to see and experience mm -hmm. and to feel. My first trip here... Uh, it was several years ago, and I came through uh, exactly the way he described. I drove up the Going to the Sun uh, Trail road and uh, drove around. I wanted to do a fishing trip. I probably spent more than three hours. It was most of a day. But I went up over that road and down around, uh, and the, down around the south end of uh, Glacier National Park. And uh, I did take some time to fish, but uh, as I looked at it, uh, this trip, I was telling Ray, I don't remember any of seeing any of this stuff. <laughs> the, <laughs> exactly. the waterfalls. The I was in a different place in my countries. life at that time too. I wasn't where uh, I am now, and uh, I try to pay attention to those things. But I, at that time in my life, I wasn't looking at that stuff. I was looking more at uh, just fishing or whatever. Right. Which you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, and that's a good way to connect too. But I, I, uh, but you it was like connecting. seeing it. It was like seeing it for the first time this time. Mm -hmm. Even though I've been here before, I didn't see it like this. I didn't take time to, to hike, to go out and uh, see some of these pristine lakes and pristine places. They're just and the cedar forest. Yeah. The cedar forest was cedar fantastic. forest was it was incredible. just fantastic. And the falls, Running Eagle Falls. Listen, Avalanche Lake. Listen to the four winds. Oh, and a fish just jumped up over oh, there. Yes, they did. <laughs> right next to us. The the uh, the um, flies are starting to hatch out here, and you can see probably quite a few flies, maybe flying around here, but they're dipping down into the water, and the fish are feeding. It's beginning to feed on the side of the lake, but right down here, just on the other side of it, a fish jumped. Interesting. Okay. Just came right out. And did that right Said in front hello. of us, but you see that kind of thing when you're when you're in nature and you take the time. But you know we're we're here, we're not disturbing anything. We're trying to just be quiet, and connect, and take a moment to just be be in the moment. And I love being in the moment with you. It's wonderful. 